Do corporations and responsible figures from politics and the civil service override applicable legislation? That can frequently be observed. This raises ethical and economic questions. Workers and taxpayers are fundamentally dependent on these stakeholders. It is often complicated for companies in many industries to enter the market due to high wages, overregulation in some cases and state economy. Is it possible to circumvent certain power interests and existing cartels and even reduce your own company's costs? Or rather are there ways to use the existing state-directed infrastructure in a targeted way? In principle, yes. However, fast-changing basic conditions, legislative changes, inflation, disinformation, wars, a changing workforce and pandemics have been fatal for many individuals, companies and private institutions. In fairness, it must be admitted that not everyone can benefit from the state's subsidies in equal measure. Corporations, companies with close links to the state, and established organizations are undoubtedly still doing fairly well in the state-run economy. Those who are less well represented have to put in more effort, find new solutions, adapt and work far more to have a chance. Is this negative per se? In principle, no. Digitalization should be used to enable a more participatory society. There have very likely not been as many outsiders, marginalized groups, sick people and, unfortunately, deaths as there are at the moment for a long time. Is our economic system and so-called modern society focusing predominantly on additional damage to the environment and climate, as well as overpopulation and the societal illnesses that result from this? In light of that, is it possible to still describe social policy as social? Unfortunately, this is less and less the case. Are the many excluded groups ultimately a risk? Will the ever-increasing refugee flows lead to societal tensions? Evidently, but who will pay the price? In a state-run economy, it is assumed that bills will be paid. In this way, customers and all citizens bear the losses. It therefore goes against the polluter pays principle. Nevertheless, the inhibition threshold for taking risks seems to still be low. In percentage terms, the number of figures who hold responsibility is continually decreasing. Never before have individuals had to fight so strongly for their rights, convictions, ideas and visions as they have to today. Consequently, there has rarely been a better time to become active. It is not possible to control everything with power. In fact, many constraints and opportunities arise naturally. The challenges present in the last 20 years were not as significant as those faced today. Or is this deceiving? Perhaps problematic issues that have been suppressed are simply coming more to the fore. Right now, of all times in the midst of hardship rooted in state economy the focus should be directed towards effective privatization. Moreover, workers and citizens should be included in the process, and the transformation in terms of energy policy and economics should be accelerated and implemented as far as possible.